Hollow fly is one of the most addictive patterns I tie. It's hugely effective on tons of different species of fish, has an amazing action, and is the basis for tons of innovative predator flies. Here's how I've tied it over the years. With every hollow fly, I keep proportions in mind. Here I tie this fly in thirds. The first third, which is the back half, is actually a bit longer than a third of the shank. I start my thread at about the third mark and burn the thread back to the band. Then I bring the thread back a few wraps. For the tail you can use more or less anything. I use mainly bucktail and Icelandic sheep hair. With this fly, I'm going to use bucktail. Measure out a piece of fairly trim bucktail that is a little over 4 inches. Then tie it in, cover the bucktail with tight wraps down the shank. Toward the end, ease off so you don't flare the tail out. You can also tie the hair 360 degrees around the shank if you like, but I rarely do that. Bring the thread up, and then wrap some small lateral scale flash around the thread. I have set the length by a couple inches here, but make sure at least one end extends beyond the bucktail. Then cover the flash and bring your thread up a bit. Leave a little room for the tips of your first bit of bucktail. To get a thin clump of bucktail, cut off the ends and place two wraps around the ends. Now you want the bucktail to cover the shank 360 degrees. Accomplish this by spinning the bucktail with pressure. Do it in a very controlled manner though. Once you've done this, cover up all the bucktail with writ wraps. Also if you want an easier version to get your feet wet, take a look at the craft fur version here. At this point, apply some Zapigap to the threads. That's what's happening here. Honest. Then cover the glue with some thread wraps. I'll also use a paper towel with white thread to get rid of any excess so I can tie and go. After this, make sure the glue is dry and spruce the bucktail a bit. Use an empty pen or your fingers to distribute the fibers back as evenly as possible. Now this is our first solo tie. I really like to pinch and tame the bucktail on all of my hollow fly patterns. I also caress and stroke these patterns more than is healthy for a normal human being. Now let's put some good pressure on with these thread wraps. Remember, we're making a thread dam and we never tie over the bucktail. I turn the fly during these wraps because I'm not good enough to wrap perfectly straight myself. I wrap some on the bottom, the sides, and the top. The goal is to wrap the thread perfectly straight. That is, perfectly straight in 360 degrees. I wrap the first two hollow ties so that the hair lays back more tightly than the last two wraps. At this point, bring up a generous amount of flash. I use wing and flash here, and it's a lot like angel hair and other similar flash materials. Simply lay it on flat over the top and distribute it around the shank, and then wrap around it a couple times. It doesn't matter if the flash is flipping everywhere at all. Then fold the front part back and make some wraps over this. After this, wrap back a bit. Now we're ready for our second hollow tie. This one goes at about the two-thirds mark. Repeat the steps that you just undertook on the first part. Just smash the bucktail with your fingers and use tension to distribute it. Now this bit of bucktail will be a little thicker than the last one. And you'll repeat this all the way up until the last clump of bucktail. You're going to cover the bucktail with thread wraps again here. Once again, give it a dab of Zapigap and take a few wraps of thread through it. Make sure the glue is dry before you proceed. Here we go again. When you push the fibers back, try to move them so that the fibers are evenly distributed around the shank. 
I just love caressing these flies for some reason. Now, hollow tie this guy, making sure that the fibers are not in a bullet shape. Pinch it, twist it, etc. Don't tie the bottom tighter than the top, or any other side for that matter. Now let's switch to a closer view here. I'm going to just get everything situated here and line the thread up a bit. Notice the positioning of the hollow tie. It's about at the one-third mark. For this remaining one-third, we're going to put everything closer together. Basically, we want the whole fly to be denser toward the eye. Now let's add some lateral line material here. Fold it over just like in the tail section. But you want to have about two inches of overhang here so that the tips of one section will extend a little past the tail section. And do the same on both sides. With some color combinations I'll tie more flash here and tie it in more on the top in a fan shape. For this color, I like it a bit more subtle and on the sides. Now wind your thread forward and tie down another white clump of bucktail. This clump is going to be thicker than the last two. Notice that as you move forward, you tie thicker pieces of bucktail in less space. This is a very important part of this fly. Distribute it around the shank evenly and tie it down tightly. With this clump, I don't cut the tag ends, but make sure to do enough wraps to really bind it down. Then move the bucktail around before you push it back with your pen. Once again, I use a bunch of taming techniques on the bucktail, like pinching and squeezing, but make sure to wind relatively tightly and create that nice cone shape. The second to last hollow tie can shape the fly as much as the last tie, so spend enough time to really get it where you want it. Also remember to wrap from multiple angles to get it to lay back evenly in 360 degrees. Pinch that bucktail. For the last clump of bucktail, I tie the thickest piece here. This is a clump of light olive, but gray and other colors work really well here too. Now distribute this around just like with the other hollow ties. Make sure to crank down on this stuff, otherwise the hair will pop out sometimes. Make sure that none of the tag ends are going to smash the other hollow tie down. This is really important. Just trim the tag end of the clump before you tie down, but leave some bucktail to protect the thread and add density. Now we're looking good. If you have a really darker color, transition this color with other darker colors tied in along the way, rather than just all white up to this point. 
As with all other ties, use a pen to push this back. Pinch the bucktail and stroke the fibers back. With this tie, make sure to wrap down tightly until you've got a nice cone shape. Really give it some tension. After I've got everything where I want it, I'll put a very small dollop of Zappa Gap on the thread, plus a couple wraps. This locks everything into place in case the thread comes undone for any reason. However, make sure to do the next step quickly before the glue dries. I use tab eyes for hollow flies since jungle cock is definitely not my style when it comes to flies that I fish. Now turn the fly to let gravity work for you and push the tab into the super glue. Sometimes it sticks and sometimes it doesn't. Now make two wraps. Tab eyes are really durable and work great on these patterns because they don't smash the head. Never ever smash the head unless you don't want a hollow fly. It's the cardinal sin. Then repeat the same process on the other side. Make sure your thread is turned clockwise and not flat so that it pinches into the tab eyes. After this has gone off without a hitch, make a few more wraps and try to do this before the glue has completely dried. Then whip finish the fly and add some Zappa Gap. One of the biggest challenges with tying hollow flies is knowing how poofy to leave the fly. Normally you want it poofier than you would think, but this depends on the bucktail. The article on the site goes into this much more thoroughly if you're interested. Now just set your poofy fly to the side so that the super glue can dry. When your fly is dry, grab a large paper clip and slide the point into the eye of the hook. You're going to be hanging these guys up. This part is critical. We're going to run some water over our fly. I use hot water, but everyone has their own ritual. Some even freeze their flies. Fold the fibers back and soak the fly thoroughly. Then find an area that's not too dry and hang up your fly. Now when the fly is dry, snip off the flash so that the fly is about five and a half to five and a quarter inches long. Your fly will be much more sausage-like now. This pattern is really important, if nothing more than to learn the technique. However, they also really pound fish. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.